ask you, what would you say about a person whose intention it was to destroy the Kaaba? You would say he's a degenerate. You would say he's the scum of the earth. The Prophet Sallallahu saying that the blood of one believer is more precious than the Kaaba. And now you see it's a norm that a Muslim will take the life of another Muslim. We complain that globally the Kuffar are taking our lives. But you look, if the Kuffar weren't taking them, we would be taking them. You don't have to go far, you don't have to go global, you don't have to go national, you can go local. Where one gangster will pop off another gangster. One Muslim will pop off another Muslim because he wants to be the baddest drug dealer in town. Because he wants to have the greatest street cred in town. And he will kill his Muslim brother because he's deluded by this dunya. I often wonder, what will these people do on their day of judgment when they stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wife will come and she will say, Oh Allah, this is the man who left me a widow. I often wonder, what will they do on the day of judgment when the child will come and he will say, Oh Allah, this is the man who left me an orphan. In the time of the Prophet Sallallahu there was a Sahabi, he was in the battlefield and he was about to strike the enemy. And when he saw that the Sahabi was about to strike him, he threw down his armor and he said, Ashadu la ilaha illallah. And the Sahabi still struck him. And when they came back to the Prophet Sallallahu and they told the Prophet Sallallahu what had happened, the Prophet Sallallahu became so enraged. He said, what will you do on the day of judgment? When this person will, will come with the kalima, la ilaha illallah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi repeated this again and again and again. And the Sahabi mentioned that when I saw the anger of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I said, oh, a messenger of Allah, he only did this to save his neck. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became more angry. And he said, Hal shakakta sadra? He said, did you slit open his chest to see what was in his heart? Did you slit open his chest to see what was in his heart? In some narrations, it is mentioned that this Sahabi was no other than Osama bin Zayd radiallahu anhu, the beloved of the Prophet. And other narrations mention that this Sahabi says, when I saw the anger of the Prophet sallallahu I wish that I hadn't embraced Islam until that day. This was a kafir who was in the battlefield and it's a possibility that he recited the kalima la ilaha illallah to save his neck. But look at the response of the Prophet sallallahu because this is the value of a life of a believer. And now you see Muslims popping off other Muslims. Why? Because they want street red. Because they want to be the baddest drug dealers in town. What will these people do on the day of judgment when they stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What will these people respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the person whose life they have taken stands in front of them? What will these people do? And the reality is many youngsters are very impressed by these drug dealers. You know, you drive a 50,000 pound car, you have a thick wallet and you don't have to work a day in your life. And they see these people and they become envious, easy way out. But let me tell you, Allah deprives these people of any barakah in their life. And this is a reality. I've spoken to these people, they have no barakah in their life. And the reason for that is that they're always watching their own back. Why? Because Allah makes their life a misery like they make other people's lives a misery. Like they make other innocent people's lives a misery. Have you ever seen a woman whose husband's a junkie and he comes home and he batters his wife black and blue? Don't you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears her cries? Don't you think this affects the drug dealer? Have you ever seen the child who's literally brought up an orphan because his father's a druggie and he has no time for his child? Don't you think Allah sees the loss of childhood? Don't you think this affects the drug dealer? Have you ever seen those parents who bring up their child with all the love and affection in this dunya and they have lost the aspiration for that child and he becomes a crackhead? And the same child who should have been the coolest of his parents' eyes steals and beats his own parents. Don't you think Allah hears the pain and the anguish which emanates from their heart? Don't you know that between the dua of a Muslim person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no hijab. Allah hears it directly. How many people's lives do these people make a misery? And how many youngsters suck up to these guys? Make them their role models. Let me tell you, these people are not men. These people are bloodsuckers of innocent people because they are number one and they don't give a jack about anybody else. And this is a reality. They don't care. They don't care if they spoil people's homes as long as they drive their big cars and they have their thick wallets. And these are not men. Let me define for you what a real man is. 
not through my word, but the word of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was speaking to the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum. And he said, who is the strongest from amongst you? And they said, it's him who can overpower him. It's him who can overpower him. You know, like we say, it's him. You know, who pumps the most iron. It's him who knows Aikido. It's him who the gunman, you know, will take other people's lives without a flinch. And then he'll regard himself bad. The Prophet Sallallahu said, no, it's not them. It's that person that when he's angry, he can control his anger. This is a real man. Because it's easier to punch out somebody's lights than to forgive a person. This is a real man. And they will understand that if you are well impressed by these people, the drug dealers, etc., then you're a weak person. A real man is him who can control his nafs because he understands that on the day of judgment, he will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever action he has done in this dunya, he will have to answer in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a real man. A man who can control his anger when he's angry. Ilahi anta rabbi dul jalal